Hey, it's Soleil, and this is episode 166 of the Orange Pill Investor. And today I want to talk about binary events and a couple of advantages to selling covered calls over selling cash secured puts, uh, which is which is why I kind of moved from running the wheel to just going to, stri- to going straight to step two. <clears throat> and buying 100 shares and just selling the covered calls against them. And I've said before that I think the the returns are pretty similar. And I do think that that is true if we're just talking about premium. But the mechanics are a little bit different. So I'm just going to go to Riot. It's pretty cheap, something that most people could probably trade. If you can't afford to trade Riot, you probably just need to save some money. Get between two to five thousand. Not financial advice, and I'm going to talk about taxes in a minute. I'm not a tax advisor either, but from the way I understand it, it could have some implications. So if I want to go, and then I'm just going to go out till next week so that I get a little bit more premium in here. But generally, I'll just sell some at the money puts because I kind of want to get assigned anyway. So I'll get a $40, you know, almost a $40 discount on $950 if I sell this cash secured put and the price drops below $950 by the expiration date. If I sell a covered call, it's going to be a little bit different. So the price right now is 952. So I'm going to get more premium selling that put because there's only 2 cents between the strike price and this price. But if this price was 975, the premium on the cash secured put and the premium on the covered call would be roughly the same. But on this on this covered call, you can also sell right at the money. What I generally do is I'll build like 10% of call away value in here. So I probably just go to the 1050 anyway. That's about one and a half percent ROI on the week. And if Riot pumps to 1050 or 11 or 12 or 15 or whatever, I'll profit that extra hundred bucks from the price going from 950 up to my strike. So I like to build in a little bit of call away value with the covered calls, which is a little bit difficult, more difficult to to settle that in my brain when I do cash secured puts. Because cash secured puts, it's kind of like the opposite. Like, okay, well, I'm going to go down a strike. I'm going to get this 1% to 2% premium return. And then if the price drops, oh, excuse me, if the price drops 50 cents, then I'll also get that discount. So it you're kind of building an additional discount in here if the price drops, whereas in selling a covered call, I'm it's more intuitive for me to calculate how much call away value I'm going to get. And the other part is that if I do get assigned here, it's not really my account value isn't going to grow because I got this discount. It's just not going to go down as much. But the main, um, okay, so let me talk about the tax part too. So as far as I know, you're always going to be paying short-term short term capital gains if you are opening and closing a put. Same thing if you're going to be opening and closing a short-term covered call. However, and I need to take a look at this, but there is some kind of little weird thing that's that happens that the IRS kind of treats when you're assigned. And I have to look at that more. But one of the reasons that I do like the covered call is because if I can hold on to these hundred shares for a full year before they get assigned then that sale is long-term capital gains. That's the way that I understand it. 
So that's one reason why I just, a lot of times I'll just go straight to owning a hundred shares and then I can, uh, even if the price does go to $12 a share and I have the 1050 strike, I can go ahead and just pay that 150 bucks to roll it. I'll keep my shares. And then, you know, if my assumption about that stock hasn't changed and I do want to continue to, continue to sell covered calls against it i would just do that and then the 150 bucks that i paid to roll actually counts as a loss because i sold it for 15 dollars, bought it back for 150 that's a net 135 dollar loss so that'll offset my my gains for the year so paying to roll doesn't really bother me and certain stocks like tesla i probably i may never want to sell so I like the idea of avoiding um, getting exercised on something like a Tesla. MicroStrategy, for sure. I don't want to get my shares called away for now. Late, you know, late 2025, October, November, December, I, I may be more willing to just let them get called away because I'm anticipating wanting to take some profits around that time anyway. But I'm going to take a look at Tesla because I got punked a little bit. I only had the 200 strikes and the 205 strikes on my covered calls. So I am not benefiting from any of this pump. I think it was around. The price was probably around when on vacation on the 22nd. So, yeah, so. Tesla was 183 here. So I benefited $17 a share from 183 to 200. So that's awesome. Loving that. But then as it continued to pump and pump and pump, I'm no longer able to reap the benefits of that. And that's, of course, the trade off is you're sacrificing maximum upside for upfront profits and a greater chance of success. However, the other advantage to owning 100 shares is that if you have a binary event like earnings, I never carry a covered call against earnings in case Tesla surprises to the upside and I can just capture all of that. That actually worked fairly well. I can't remember exactly where earnings was in here, but it did pump slightly. So I was able to capture all of that. That was cool. But if I had been paying attention, I probably should have just taken my covered calls off for their delivery report. And the market is irrational. So you can have a good earnings, you can have a good delivery report, and then, you know, the stock can still tank. So the market is completely irrational. None of this shit really makes any sense. People are reporting, oh, they, they shocked, they had good you know, delivery numbers or whatever. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe it's not. But the point is, if you're selling a put, even an at-the-money put, for next week, you're going to collect this 900 bucks. If Tesla pumps to 300 the only thing that you're going to collect is this 900. However, if you're selling covered calls and you're collecting 700 here, 500 there, whatever, or you're going up and you're building in some call away value, you know, 270 would, would work out probably nicely and then collect 260 bucks, 1% for the week. That's probably something that I would target. But if you're keeping an eye on the news and you know that earnings is coming up or you know that a delivery report is coming up, I could have taken this covered call off. And I'm actually trading those on, on my, uh, my main account. But down here. So I got 400 shares of Tesla. And if I had been vigilant, I could have just taken these covered calls off. 
and it's you're not even missing a whole week of premium doing that. It would just be one day of one week. So I will I will try to pay attention. You know, so Tasty Trade's got some nice trading tools. They'll, you know, they they'll warn you like, okay, you can kind of pay attention to earnings, but something like a delivery report you would have to pay attention to on your own and you just have to keep track of that. Investor, investor day, battery day, a lot of times Tesla will just go down. Like people are not impressed. I think they should be when they're demonstrating freaking robots they designed when, when quote unquote car companies are designing robots. Uh, that's impressive to me. And the, the, the battery tech should be impressive. And, but the, the investors, a lot of times, will just be like, whatever, not interested. Especially when they want like concrete news on the $25,000 vehicle or whatever. And they just end up having high hopes. And those hopes are not really validated i suppose on a lot of these investor days and technology days and battery days that tesla has so i don't think i will probably take my covered calls off for those binary events but earnings for sure and apparently i need to add some kind of delivery numbers tracker to my calendar something to warn me because I could have captured an extra four grand, 4,500 per hundred shares. So that's like 18 grand I missed out on. And then two four men's covered calls as well, which I actually closed. I went ahead and just closed those out. I made about five grand on each of those. Would have made nine, but I had to pay like three grand to close out the covered calls at 205, which is fine. Um, that's, that's just part of the trade offs. So if you can't handle missing out on some of these big pumps, then uh yeah something else is your you know some other strategy is for you but um yeah so it was just something i was thinking about today and um might have helped to maximize efficiency if i had been paying attention to the news planned to take those covered calls off before the delivery report then it's possible that I could have captured way more. You know, like when I probably wouldn't have been able to capture at all. But let's say, you know, the price shot up to like 210, right? Then I would have probably sold the 230 call. And so then I would have I would have caught most of this pump. And then my covered call would have probably been around two, you know, 10% on top of 210 would have been 230. And I would have only missed out on about 1500 per uh, contract instead of 4,500. So there's always going to be little ways that you can tweak your trading strategy, little finer points that you can, that you can implement. And something like that doesn't take a whole lot of research. So I know some of the guys that I follow, they'll be talking about, you know, they're coming in here and they're studying the chart. And I've got like the 50 day moving average and I've got the 200 day moving average in here because I want to see something like this. Like, I guess technically this would be a death cross and this would be the golden cross or whatever. Um, but beyond that, I don't, I don't really do TA. But if I had been 
you know, if I really just trusted, okay, here's a death cross right here, I could have sold and then avoided this gap down to here. However, if I was waiting for a golden cross to get back in, I wouldn't have caught this whole, you know, pump back up. I, I assume at some point over the next month, this will, you know, the red line will cross above the white again. But just paying attention to the news a little bit, it, you know, isn't going to take a lot of your time. And so I should have probably been paying attention to deliveries. But who knows? I mean, the market could just go 10 delivery announcements in a row and not really give a shit. So who knows? But those are some things to think about. If, you, if, if you're running the wheel just for premium, probably doesn't matter. But if you're going to pay attention to binary events, you can own the 100 shares. Take off the covered call for that one day. And then there's a potential to capture a lot of this upside when there's a sharp move. And then as far as the taxes are concerned, if you can avoid getting exercised for a year, you can end up with a, a long-term capital gains. So those are a couple of factors in, in deciding whether you want to do cash secured puts, covered calls, or just run the wheel and, uh, and not worry about any of these binary events at all. And just sell puts until you're assigned and sell covered calls until you're, they're called away and just let the, let, let the chips fall where they may. But, um, Taking those things into account is does not take a lot of effort. Not like studying the chart and going in and checking the fundamentals and reading the freaking earnings reports and doing a whole bunch of background effort. All of that cuts it doesn't necessarily cut into your returns, but it does cut into your returns per minute invested. And at this point, I'm trying to be as efficient as possible with my profits, but also as efficient as possible with my time. Time's the only resource that you can't get more of. So the less time I spend on trading, you know, if I can get very similar returns, just not doing a whole bunch of freaking research and reading about this and reading about that, then uh, I'd rather do that. I can spend more time doing things I want to do. And um, I actually do enjoy trading, so it's not that it's an unpleasant activity. But I do still want to get it done as, as quickly as possible and just maximize every minute of the day if I can. So... I hope that helps and uh, talk to y'all next time. Be good, y'all.